Hello, I am Dr. Sunil Ishwa. I am a consultant gynec laparoscopic surgeon and infertility specialist. At present, I am the clinical director of IKEA Speciality Clinic and Fertility Center on Kanakpura Road, Bangalore. I am also attached to Apollo Cradle Fertility and Motherhood Fertility in Bangalore. After counseling for an IVF, we do encounter lots of questions from the uh, couple which are related to the hear and say or what they have googled on the net. So the first myth which they ask is, Doctor, test tube baby means does it really grow in the test tubes? No, that's not really wrong. Test tube baby doesn't mean that it grows in the test tube. It just means that most of the process of creating an embryo happens outside the body. We remove the eggs out of the body, we take the sperms, fertilize them, incubate them for 3 to 5 days and then put it back into the uterus. And rest of the process of baby's growth and the delivery happens within the woman's body. Many couples also ask us whether their own oocytes or their own eggs or sperms have been used for the process. Definitely, until unless there is an indication where we may not be able to use their own egg or sperms, we counsel the patient regarding the use of any other person's sperms or egg. Until unless the patient consents for the above procedure, we are not supposed to legally or ethically to do transfer of any other embryos who use oocyte or sperm for this couple. Therefore, we do not use until unless we get a consent for using a donor uh, gametes. The next question which comes to, by the couple is, is this procedure or uh, IVF a 100% success? Uh, can you give, give a guarantee of 100%? No, any doctor who knows this procedure knows that we can only ha achieve at least 50 to 55% of uh, pregnancy rate depending upon the circumstances the patient comes with. Like age definitely matters a lot that to women's age in uh, dictating the terms of success. Next myth about the infant uh, IVF conception is that they have to take full bed rest from the uh, point where the embryo is put back into the uterus to the time of delivery. Actually speaking, complete bed rest or restricted activity increases the complications associated with the pregnancy. I, in my practice, don't advise them complete bed rest. They can do their own, own daily uh, work, like household work, whatever they were continuing. Though I do advise them not to take stressful jobs, long distance travel, or engage themselves in activity which could lead to uh, injuries. Many a times my patients ask me that, in IVF conception, we do suffer lots of complications. Like we may undergo miscarriages or we may have bleeding or we may not be having a proper baby or we may be producing abnormal baby. All these are fallacies. Any pregnancy as normally conceived or with an IVF have the same symptomatology like vomiting, giddiness or, or even a certain amount of spotting, bleeding is quite common in both in IVF and in normal conception. More complications in IVF uh, pregnancies could be related to the profile of patient. As we have seen that there are more advanced age couples who actually come for IVF treatment than an young couple. So anyone more than 30 or th uh, 33 years of age are more likely to have com complications re related to hypertension, diabetes and also preterm deliveries. Also there are genetic uh, abnormalities do increase with the age of the uh, woman. Well, another thing which my couples ask is, Doctor, I want twins. I don't want to have single baby or it will be better if I have a twin. The general conception is that if I have twins, then I finish my family and you know, in one go, I will have two babies. It's a wrong uh, concept because twins pregnancy is associated with more complications. As you know, almost 15 to 20 percent of the twin pregnancies can uh, result in preterm deliveries, there are more uh, chance of vomiting, bleeding and also increased risk of having hypertension uh, in uh, pregnancy which is twins. So therefore, we try to have a single pregnancy, we have also come down to a stage where we do a single embryo or a single blast transfer so that the, uh, so that the pregnancy outcome is better. There is quite a demand from the couple also to 
give us a certain kind of a baby. You know, they maybe they come and ask, I want a male baby or I want a female baby. We get lots of demand to do a sex selection of the embryos which we put. By just seeing an embryo, can uh, we are not, we will not be able to tell the, which uh, sex that baby belongs to, either a male or female. There has to be done a certain amount of genetic testing, which is again not allowed in India. We in India discourage this practice of sex selection. I personally be believe that this kind of a process should not be encouraged. Most of our uh, patients are quite uh, uh, well versed with the process of IVF. They do a thorough check on their Google or internet to see what are the pros and cons of it. But my advice is, first talk to your clinician about all the pros and cons, then try to uh, do any Google search. Because if you come with a prefixed ideas of whatever has been written in the Google or what you hear and say from your neighbors, it becomes quite difficult for even a clinician to certain, certain time to answer your questions. So please discuss with your clinician, discuss with the counselors in a, a fertility center as to what you can expect out of uh, IVF treatment so that we have a better outcome and better understanding of the concept of IVF. Thank you.